This video is going to discuss free body diagrams. We've been talking about Newton's laws and a lot about forces. And uh, this is just going to outline how we make a little diagram to represent what's going on with the forces that are acting on an object. So we always start with the object. Uh, I've seen it as a circle sometimes. But the vast majority of the time people use a square to represent it. We put the mass of the object inside. The mass should be in kilograms. And then we draw the forces that are acting on the object. So let's say, for example, that there's a force of gravity acting on this object. Maybe um, this is like a book resting on a table. Right? So maybe there's something, some sort of force from the table acting back up on the book, keeping it from falling down. The, so this one I call the force of gravity. The name for that force when one object is resting on the surface of another object is called the normal force. A normal force is a force that keeps one object from moving through another object. The most common situation we can think about with that is, say, a book sitting on top of a table where the table is keeping the book from falling. It's keeping the book from moving through the surface. But any force that keeps two surfaces apart or keeps two objects apart can be viewed as a normal force. If a baseball bat hits a, hits a baseball, the the force that the bat applies to the ball, that's a normal force. If you push against the wall, the force that the wall is pushing back on your hand with, that's a normal force. Any two surfaces in contact, the force that keeps them from moving through each other is called the normal force. The word normal here refers to the angle 90 degrees because the normal force always acts perpendicular to the contact between the two surfaces. So, for example, if the book is resting on top of the table, the normal force would be going straight up, assuming the table is flat. So there's a force of gravity, there's a normal force. You maybe are pushing on the side of this with an applied force. Maybe uh, the book isn't moving as fast as you think it should be because there's some force of friction. What we can see here sorry, just had to plug in, didn't want to run out of battery. What you can see here is the way we represent forces is with a capital F that says that it's a force, and then the subscript associated with it, some subscripts are commonly used, like the capital N is always going to be the normal force. Or a little g is almost always going to mean gravity, or a little f is almost always going to mean friction. And then if we want some sort of arbitrary force that's appropriate for the question we're dealing with, we'll give it a capital A for applied, maybe E for engine. You can sort of use subscripts that you want to use to represent things, although there are some standard choices. The last force, or the result of these forces, you might want to show on a free body diagram is the net force. So let's say this force of normal and force of gravity are equal to each other, so they're canceling each other out. So there's no up or down net force. The only net force on this object is coming from the applied force. Net force should always be labeled with the subscript net, and when you draw it on a free body diagram, because it actually isn't a force acting on the objects, it's just the sum of the forces, or it's the result of all of those forces, don't draw it on the mass, but instead draw it off to the side like this. And what that represents is that that net force is the total, it isn't a force itself. So again, I don't, I don't ever put this net force on the free body uh, of the diagram, but always off to the side. So let's just look at a few of these things and uh, 
we'll, we'll just practice making some free body diagrams. So a skier traveling down a hill. So a lot of times here it's going to be useful to give yourself a quick diagram of the situation to help you understand the forces that are going to be involved. So here we go, here's a skier traveling down a hill. So in this situation, this skier would be subject to a force of gravity and a normal force. Now this is a little bit of a trick. The normal force here would not be in line, it would not be straight against that force of gravity, but it would be perpendicular to the surface. So it would be in that direction, so it would be like this. So this diagram that I've made here is sometimes called a system diagram, but if we want to make it into a proper free body diagram, there's the mass, the force of gravity on the skier is pulling straight down, and the normal force is not going straight up, but it's going off on an angle because it has to be normal to the surface or perpendicular to the surface. So there's the free body diagram for a skier traveling down a hill. Now, just for whatever it's worth here, if we imagine that this force of gravity has some part that's balanced out by the normal force, and then what we can see here is there's some force of gravity that is the net force, or a component, if you will, of the force of gravity that's the net force causing the skier's acceleration, then looking at that free body diagram, we can come up with fairly easily why a skier moves down the hill or accelerates down a hill. A bucket being pulled up from a well. So I don't need a system diagram here. I'm just going to go straight to it. Here's my bucket. It's mass. There's the force of gravity. And if it's being pulled up from the bottom of the well, I can assume that the force of tension acting on the bucket is greater than the force of gravity if it's actually accelerating towards the top or at least equal to the force of gravity so it's not accelerating downward. Ft here, force of tension, and that's commonly used when the force being applied is being applied by a rope. So there you go, that's a bucket, force of gravity, force of tension. Let's try a magnet stuck to a refrigerator. This is kind of a weird one, so that's why I chose it. Here's the side of your fridge. Um, and here's your little magnet, okay? And this is sort of a system diagram. And we can see from our system diagram there's gotta be some sort of force of gravity. But what's going on with the other forces is a little bit tricky. So, Here's my magnet. I'm going to make him into a proper square. I'm going to give him a force of gravity. And there's some force that's resisting that force of gravity that must be holding the magnet back up. So what could be doing that? That's a little bit of a question. Well, presumably the, the uh, magnet has some force of attraction to the refrigerator itself. So I'm going to call that force of M for a magnetic attraction. And when it gets sucked into the side of the refrigerator, the two surfaces are in contact, so there's a normal force that's keeping the magnet from moving through the fridge. So what force could it be that's holding the magnet up? Well, this is a little bit tricky, and we're going to spend a lot of time talking about this force later. That's actually a force of friction. So the magnet force uh, the magnetic attraction of the magnet pulling the magnet towards the side of the fridge goes in one direction, the normal force goes in the other direction, force of gravity is going down, and then the force of friction between the magnet and the, and the refrigerator keeps the magnet from sliding down, and so that's the upward force. A little note here on this free body diagram. Notice that I can draw the forces as pulling or pushing. It's useful to draw them in the different ways because often it's going to help you conceptualize or visualize what's really happening in the problem. But keep in mind that just like a cart uh, behind a horse, it doesn't know if the horse is pulling or pushing the cart. It doesn't make any difference. So to draw the force going backwards on one side, or, or to draw the force on the left, 
pushing or on the right pulling, it doesn't make any difference. What's important here is the direction. So the direction of forces on a free body diagram is important. For now at least, we're going to assume that the location of forces does not matter on a free body diagram. Three T's. What that means then is you can draw that force pushing, you can draw it pulling, it doesn't make any difference. Um, we know, I guess, maybe if you are thinking about these conceptually, that where you apply the force is going to have some impact, especially when you consider the rotation of objects. But for right now, we're not ready to think about rotation, so we're going to say that the location, especially on a free body diagram, doesn't make any difference at all. So there's your fridge magnet. Slightly tricky one. And a car accelerating away from a stop sign. So here's the car. Here's the stop sign. Hmm. Where's stop sign? I'll write stop on it, then it's very clear. Um, so the car is going to accelerate away. So the engine, we can imagine, is they going to sort of push this car forward. And there's going to be some resistive forces. I'm going to call them FR. They might be friction between the tires and the axle, or between the tires and something else or they might be a rolling friction, or it might be wind resistance, but there's some resistive forces, and I'm just going to summarize them all with FR. Then I'm going to have some force of gravity acting on the car, and the surface of the road will keep the car from falling through the earth, so we will say there's some sort of normal force, and that's what that's going to look like. Now, with the way I've drawn it, I guess that's technically a system diagram, so I should move it over where I have the mass of the car, the resistive forces, oh, just to make that point, the resistive forces could be back here. It doesn't make any difference where on the box they're located. What's important is that they're still pointing left. Some engine force, force of gravity, normal force. So there you go. There's some free body diagrams, a little bit of practice. This is a skill we're going to use throughout the unit. We'll get be very comfortable with these by the end, but this is just a an introductory building block in terms of skills so that when we get to the uh, more difficult problems, we have this one.